Hey guys, welcome back to Surveying with Robert's Tuesday Tip. So, today, I thought we would talk about Trimble Connect Sync and synchronizing data between the office and the field. So, there's a lot of different ways to do that. Email, uh, OneDrive, Dropbox, Google, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. So, you know, Trimble started here a while back with background maps, right? So in order to be able to use the background maps, you had to have your warranty up to date, your maintenance. Guess what? That maintenance includes a lot of other things other than just your background map. So I thought I would show you. You're already paying for it. If you love the background maps, you're already paying for this. So you might as well learn how to use it. So I'm going to do a two-part video because I think if I try to do this all in one part, me trying to explain this to you, it's going to get really really long so I'm going to try to break this into two parts. I'm going to do the office part today and then I think next week I'll get you the field side of it. I need to set some points and do some stuff and collect some data and show you how that works and show you how to synchronize that and send that data from the from the I'm going to show you how to send it from the office to the field and then I'm going to show you how to send it from the field back to the office. So um, there's some different ways to do it. The way I intend on showing you is to go through Business Center. Along the way, I'll show you some ways you can do it without Business Center, but we're going to look at doing it with Business Center. So I've been doing cellular connections and data transfer for a long time <clears throat> with this equipment. So I, I went through this over the weekend, and I, I thought I would just bring it to you guys and show you. So I'm quit running my mouth, and I'll show you how it works. Okay, first thing you need to do get on the computer, and you need to Google um, Trimble Connect Apps, I believe is what I Googled. Yes, Trimble Connect Apps. So you're going to find Trimble Connect App Store. So you're going to click on that. Now you're going to notice up here under Accessing the App Store, it says Trimble Connect App Store right there. Now then, you, there's, and you're going to have to use your Trimble login apparently to get into this. So, let me get into my login here. You should have a Trimble login. In order for all this stuff to work, your access has to be up to date. If your access is up to date, you have a Trimble login. It should have been um, basically given to you whenever you got your data collector or whoever the administrator is has this information okay you may have to do a little bit of digging to find out who your administrator is and it's going to be the email address when they purchase the data collector it's going to be the email address that was used the like in our case the office would have put in that email address in as the administrator for your connect site okay so what you're going to need is you're going to need Trimble connect for windows you need it but you don't need it i would download it but the other thing you need is Trimble Sync Manager. Download Trimble Sync Manager. Definitely download uh, Trimble Connect for Windows. We may look at that, but really what you need is the Sync Manager. Okay? So once you have those, and you've got them downloaded on your computer, I am going to go here to... Um, let me see. Apparently I don't have Sync Manager open. Whoops, I just saw it. Let me go back. Terminal Sync Manager right there, recently added. Okay. So these are all the apps that are in, I say apps, these are all the projects that are in my Trimble Connect site. So a lot of these have just been me in here just kind of screwing around and, you know, just playing with this Trimble Connect thing. But let me show you how, kind of how I feel like the workflow should go. Okay. Now, I may stumble a little bit with this because I don't do it every day, but you'll get the idea. Project. How about we call it Robert's Project? Okay, so a project can be, and I think I've explained this to you guys before, but I'll, I'll tell you again. A project could be Wiggins, Mississippi, right? So I do a survey for the school. I do a survey for downtown. I do a survey for a Walmart. I do a survey for an Arby's, but they're all in Wiggins. So all my control and everything else, I'm using the same control for all these projects. So let's do this again.
Roberts Project, North America, license, NEI, create. Okay, so now I have Roberts Project in here. So now then, give it a second because it's actually building this project kind of on an FTP site. It's on the Trimble Connect site, so it's building it there. It's thinking about it. Okay, there it is. Um, Roberts Project. So now I have Robert's project created. Now then I can create a job. So let's call it test one. Okay. So at this time I can, there's different things I can do in here. Reference number, description, blah, blah, blah. Um, it, it's asked me for assignees. So I've already been assigned to this. My email address and everything uh, has already been put in here so i'm gonna say robert martin that's who that's who this is going to go to so when i log in this is the information i'm going to have okay so now at this point in time if i want to just skip business center and i just want to go straight to um loading stuff up i can so you'll notice right here it says job files and these are the project files so let's say that i wanted to put you know sewer storm drain water different jobs underneath this project. I could put them right there. So it, I can add a feature library if I want to. Units, US, Mississippi East, that was the project I did before so that popped right back up. You can go in and how you would set your project in here. Um, as you can see I can look at it. I could say define. If I go to define I zoom down on the area I'm looking for which is not in Iowa, not in Missouri, not in Arkansas. Let's go here to Mississippi. Let's go down here. South Hattiesburg. There's Purvis, Lumberton, Wiggins. There's Wiggins, Mississippi right there. So now it's going to give me all my choices. So I can say um, NAD 83, Mississippi East. Boom. Uh, Jewett 18, save. So it's telling me right there I need a project height. So your height is your ellipsoid height. So you're going to take basically, the easiest thing to remember is take about 90 foot off your elevation. That's your general project height. At least it is down here. Now you may want to check this um, in there you work, but where I'm at, it's roughly about 90 foot. So if I said, um, let's see, what is it? About 120 would be about my project height. Let's get rid of that little question mark there. Okay, so everything else should be set up. I'm going to say create. That's really the only thing I needed to make sure of. If there was other job points, CSV files, that would go right here. I guess I should have showed you that. You can open this up and you can add CSV files in this bottom thing right here. If you had CSV points you want to load into that job. But that's not the way we're going to do it. Like I said, it's putting all this up on the connect site, so give it a minute. Syncing. Okay, so there we go. My job is test one. There it is. You know, if I wanted to go over here and look, uh, so I could say this is a template, I can do whatever I want to with it. Change status, blah, blah, blah. So we've, we've got this in here. Okay, so let me minimize that. So I had this TBC project going on. Now, first of all, let me show you this. Let me go into Trimble Access. Okay, so if you look over at the top, I need to sign in. So I'm going to say sign in. Okay, I'm signed in. Remember all those projects that we saw a minute ago on the sync thing? Okay, so they're all in here now. So if I say sync that, just to make sure, so that's the little sync button up there. And up there next to it is a little cloud thing. So I can say how I want to do my cloud settings. So I've got a time interval of one minute on my syncing. You may not want it to be one minute. You may want it five minutes, whatever. I'm going to say accept. Okay, so look, the second one down there in the field where it says Robert's Project. It's grayed out, and you're like, yeah, but Robert, it's grayed out. I can't use it. Tap on it. It's going to download it. So 
right now it's basically telling me the GeoID file in there. So I'm say I'm just gonna keep the local file. Download the project. So now that project, you'll see it says test one. That was the name of our job, test one under Robert's project. Let's download that. There's test one. There we are. So now if I go in and look, job, projects, Robert's projects, job, test one. There's test one. I go in and look at the properties, Mississippi East, which is what I set, U.S. Survey Feet, which is what I set. All that stuff is in it, right? Operator, Robert Martin. Except, okay, so now I got my job set up, but now I need points in there. So let's say you're going to send a crew out to go survey something. So let's say that you want to send them information. The scenario I'm going to set up for you is I'm going to go out there and I'm going to drop four pins where you see this square at on the screen. But I'm going to set this and then I'm going to move it. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to kind of bake the cake for you. You know what I mean? Like cooking show, you know, I was like, here's how you mix the ingredients and then voila, open up the oven, there's a cake. I'm going to kind of do that for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go set these pins out in the field, but I'm going to take this drawing and I'm going to move it a little bit. So the reason I'm going to do this, if I was to send you out to go survey this piece of property, I don't know where those pins are at. I, I can I can guess because you know usually you can look at possession lines right on a map and you can kind of guess as to what um, where that goes so I can guess at it so I'm gonna give you basically a look point right so you have each one of these corners for a look point so I've got the base point down here at the bottom point number one is the base point so I do have that because of Another job we did in the area, there just happens to be a base point there. So, I need you to go locate these pins and set these pins. Now, my idea is that I'm going to do this, but what we're going to do is we're going to locate two pins, and then I'm going to show you how to use the, um, what's it called, georeference map, I think. It's under um, Adjust, I believe. It's under Kogo and Adjust and it's georeference map. So I'm gonna show you how to take this, this DXF and drag it to those pins in the data collector so that we can go find the other two pins. Not only that, we're going to take pictures of all the property corners and maybe a couple other things on site and then we're gonna sync all that stuff and I'm gonna show you how to send it back to the field. So that's the reason for this drawing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to window this whole thing so I have all these objects. Okay, so up here at the top of the screen, oh, and by the way, I've got a background map up here. If you'll notice right there, it says Trimble Maps. So there's your Trimble Maps now. Used to be over here, and you had to get to it this way. Now they have been nice enough that they put us an icon up here at the top. I noticed that when I was playing a while ago. Okay, so back to where we were at. So I'm going to say Send a Sync. So I've already, well, take that back. Let me select these objects. There they are. They're selected. Now you're going to notice over here on the right, it says uh, item selected three. So there is a CSV point. It says selected one. That would be this point number one that's based down here at the bottom. It says line work DXF two. So there's actually two lines. There's I broke this line just messing around. So I broke this line away. So this is one continuous line and that's a separate line. It's just the way I did it. There aren't any surfaces, there aren't any text. If I wanted to, I could label all these. And that, that label, like if I labeled the varying distance, that would all come over as well. Um, so I'm going to do all that. I'm going to say add selection. Whoop, I didn't give it a file name. Um, let's call it lot. Whoops. Lot survey. Okay, lot survey. Add selection. Now it's there. I'm going to say send. Now when I say send, it's going to bring me back to the Trimble Sync Manager and it's going to say add to project or discard. 
See, it's going to do lot survey CSV and it's going to do lot survey DXF. So I'm going to say add to project. Now then, up here at the top, it's going to ask me what project. So I'm going to say Robert's project is where I want to send it to. Projects and jobs, right? So I'm sending it to the project, not to the job. So I'm going to hold down the control and I'm going to select that one and that one. I don't know if that makes any difference or not, but it seemed like if those weren't lit up blue, it didn't go. I'm going to say continue. Setting up project files, configuring, blah, blah, blah. There it is. So, let's see here. I've got it set up to sync every minute, but let's go look and see what happens. If I go into the job, and let's see if I can force it to download. Okay, here's a little trick I figured out. Delete. Yes. Redownload it. Now I'll let them come over. <laughs> I can cheat that away. Um, rather than sitting here waiting for a minute for it to sync. Um, okay, so now if I go to the base map, the little two squares, you notice I have a DXF selected again to make it selectable. If I go to point files, I have a lot survey, which is my CSV, and I say accept. Now you see I have my, my boundary, and there's my control point. So if I wanted to, I could go here, Map Files, Trimble Maps, Satellite, and there is my file line there. So there's my boundary in the data collector now. So that way you can send files back and forth. So um, to keep this video from being extremely long, I'm pretty much going to stop right here and we're going to look at in the next video, I'm going to show you, we're going to go out, like I said, we're going to locate these things. We're going to locate these property corners and we are going to um, stick them out. Okay, so hopefully that, I didn't go through it too fast. Hopefully you understand how to get it to the data collector. You need to download the sync manager. You need to, um, create the project, you need to create the job, you need to take and send your CSV points and send your uh, DXF files and stuff to that project and then all you have to do is go to the base map, turn it on, and life is good. But what we'll end up doing is we'll end up collecting data and then we'll take pictures of things and I'm going to show you a really cool way to take pictures of the data collector and then we're going to bring all that into Business Center and we'll show you how that works. So that video might end up being a little bit longer. I'm not sure. But anyways, guys. Does that help? I know some of you are using some other things, but you're already paying for this. Why not use it? So um, that's just something I, I had. I was at the um, Alabama Survey Conference last week and I was talking to some people and they were asking me about you know, synchronizing data with Google Drive and this, that, and other. I'm like, guys, you, you're current on your warranty. Why don't you just use sync and just be done with it? Well, they didn't even know it even existed. I'm like, well, that's probably my fault for not telling you. So, I thought I'd put a video together to show everybody how this works, because I, I think it's pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool how it all works and how it all ties together with Business Center. So, anyways, hope this helps. Um, hope this was informative. And um, as always, God bless. And I guess I'll, I guess I'll see you guys in part two. See you next week.